Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Tuesday, January 12th. So, a uh, pretty interesting day overall for the markets. We'll get into the price action for the uh, for the day, and uh, of course, this video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice recommendation. It is education purposes only. Um, I just thought I would bring this up first because I don't talk about this every day in these videos, but um, this is what we do at Tribeca Trade Group, right? So we um, I run three different programs, right? I have my trading account, which I'm doing all day long, right? Which covers a little bit of day trading, mostly swing trading. But yeah, it's the majority of what I do. Um, uh, also, what we do is we compile a, a weekly watch list over the weekend. Uh, we have a program that, that we've uh, put in place uh, back in August. Somebody gave me the idea for this. I was putting out a weekend watch list every week. And somebody said, hey, I'm actually buying this every week and it's working out quite well. So I started doing that back in August. And um, we'll talk more about that as the video goes on. But um, it's it's really cool because I don't think anybody's doing anything like this. I've actually mentioned it on Twitter a couple times that, hey, if you put a weekend watch list together, why not just go ahead and, um, you know, if you think that they're really good setups and they're close to triggering, um, I do this every week, right? So Monday I buy the whole list. I think this week we have 20 some odd names and uh, it's outperforming nicely again. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, performance and again I'll go over that and then of course we have the trend portfolio which is for for um, more of a, a longer term account where you know I'm really riding the trends in names you know names like uh, CrowdStrike names like uh, you know what else do we have in there like an MSCI right so we've got about 30 33 names in there too that have done um, you know, very, very well. Square and PayPal, right? I'm riding the, the long-term trend in those names. So um, yeah, I think we have about 33 names in there now. So anyway, let's talk about today a little bit. I'll get back to the, to the, uh, to the watch list. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of nice setups. Um, I would start with just, you know, what we kind of saw today with, with the S&P and it looked a little bit uh, sketchy there for a bit. I mean, we're still hanging right above this area. So the S&P is kind of grinding, right? That's not where the alpha is right now in the market. It's been going flat. It's been going flat all week. It's getting quite coiled. So, um, you know, I... <laughs> I personally think it's important to take profits as you go along, you know, as we're kind of finding some really good stock setups. Um, but I think that, you know, if the overall market does want to move down a little bit, you know, it's going to affect those single stocks, right? Um, you know, some selling kind of ignites a little bit more selling, right? We know that the, with the way that how fast this market is, once some market participants start to sell a little bit, others pick up on it and, and um, you know, they start to play to the short side a little bit so so again <clears throat> the level we had a nice like kick save today like right around like 11 12 o'clock it you know it looked like we were going to start um exploring some areas down in here um you know for the for the s p which again is, is not the end of the world if that happens in my opinion but you could see this s p just does not want to go higher right now um, I, I don't know if people are some funds are selling or it is or it is just a lot of rotation, which I do think that we're seeing a you know a, a lot of sector rotation, which in my opinion is pretty is pretty good. Like if you could stay pretty um, objective to what areas of the market are moving and and really not stay stubborn, right? To ha to having to be like you know oh I got to be a growth investor, right? If you could play some other areas of the market. Uh, you know, you're going to find some opportunities there too. But I'll tell you, there was a lot of great looking growth names today too. So yeah, I, I would pay attention to this 3790 because we were going in, uh, going over in last night's member webinar that we really don't, you know, I've got, got the five day moving average here, but you know, if this market wants to go a little bit lower, um, you know, it's going to break that. It's going to break that support level, and there's not really a ton of things down here until you kind of get down here, which is what another, you know, 40 handles down. So now, what I would like to see, of course, is to move higher. But you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I love the people who think that they do have a crystal ball, but I, I don't. Um, <laughs> you know, so I I basically change what I'm doing based on how the how the market changes in front of me. Nasdaq. We'll talk a little bit about this. Um, you know, this held in here too. Um, the cues for a level to watch, 
right? So I mentioned one in the S&P, which I think is very important. I've been quoting this all week long and retweeting myself. 37.90. So again, nice hold of this, but, but I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. 37.90 is the level to watch. In the Qs, uh, the level is to watch is 313, right? So we got into that. We got a nice hammer bar right where, I mean, come on, you know, right, right where our support level is. So um, definitely interesting. And then we go to IWM, and IWM is the only one that is above value, but um, really trading like a champ at this point. Um, the performance in the in the small caps, and and again, you could see up, <laughs> you know, up 1.7 percent. Um, I've talked about this chart a couple times. I was just going to bring this up uh, very quickly. Uh, this is. Um, this is the IWM to Qs, right? And this kind of, to me, helps put things in perspective a little bit, right? Um, to note how long this performance has gone on. So for example, if you look at a five-year chart, small caps enumerator, Qs denominator, look at the outperformance, so again, or, or the underperformance of IWM. Because again, um, if I had it flipped around the other way, you could say, wow, you know, Qs really have outperformed, and they have. Um, but in this chart, I've got the IWM in the numerator. So it is, you know, we're, we're retracing a lot of the 2000. I mean, we're not even back to where we were in 2017, 2018, but we, we are at least retracing, you know, what we saw here. So I don't know, like if you wanted to draw like a channel line, um, could I do that really quick? You know, just to say like a, re a reversion for a reversion to the mean type analysis, um, you could basically draw something like this. Oh, that worked. And um, something like, let's put this back in here and I'll stick with to see if we can. I love how Bloomberg changes this. But, um, you know, this kind of channel. So we're, we're kind of back in the channel now of that underperformance of IWM. Remember for a while, you know, back in here, this thing really went to a crazy level where the small caps were doing nothing and the queues were, were running with the ball. So, you know, where could this go to continue to... So it has done a mean reversion. So it's back in this channel, but I don't know. Some Sometimes this happens and, and you know, small caps can continue to run. So we'll, um, we'll continue to pay attention to this rate relationship, but, you know, uh, if you put, it's the reason why I'm bringing this up again, just to put things in perspective, we're, we're basically just back to where this this overall trend is. So I don't know. Maybe maybe IWM wants to do something even greater than that at this point. Um, I would watch maybe 0.7. You know, could be a next area that that we uh, that we get up to. All right? What's this ratio now? 0.67. So yeah, it could, could it's you know definitely could could continue to uh to outperform but uh, you know in any event i wanted to spend a minute or two on that um you know value where when we get into sectors and and kind of do a cross analysis here um you know the the what i like to refer to as the dirty energy uh you know or traditional energy sorry i'm trying to be gimmicky here but uh, the traditional energy xop oih xle you know is re has really been outperforming the clean energy, well, remember, just this week, because last week the clean energy stocks were up like 15%, right? That's the PBW ETF, uh, which should be in here someplace. Uh, so again, you know, they're really playing a little bit of catch up and, and nice to see this participation out of this group. I mean, where could these stocks continue to go? You know, we've seen a whole bunch of them outperform. I tell you what, I haven't really been playing this group that much. Um, I talked about like a name last night, Fang. You know, so everybody's talking about the Fang stocks. Well, look, look at the Diamondback Energy stock. Right, this thing was up another seven percent. I mean, these these things have big momentum. I still don't think they're getting as much coverage. Right, so so maybe when financial media starts to talk a little bit more about these, then you know that um, that it might be over for this move. But you know, I don't know seventy two. You know, and if we look at the weekly the weekly chart. You know, Fang is making a, a, I mean, you know, remember, this was a $120 stock. It's still half that, right? And if you go and you look at the ETFs, you know, there's nothing to say that this can't continue to revert, um, you know, back up to what, maybe 50? 
I think would be in the cars. At least this this R1 is at 48. So it's interesting to me. It's interesting. And, and maybe putting on, you know, again, if you don't want to pick the individual names because you haven't been paying attention to like an Oxy or a Fang or an APA, you know, the ETFs will do it for you. Um, because again, once a, once a group has momentum like this, um, I know some people are shy, shy away from doing the sector ETFs, but um, it's up three and a half percent today. They move um, when when there's broad participation in a group, right? Um, XOP was up 5.6 percent today. Let's talk about big moves, right? Um, and again, this is this is off the weekly chart. So um, I, I, you know, I haven't even gone into anything that I've traded so far. But yeah, here's clean energy that did have a really good day today. Um, you know, names like plug. Plug getting, I mean, it's crazy. Plug got another big uh, contract. This is with Renault. Uh, the name is up another twelve dollars. So, whew, well, I mean, that is that is that is now the hockey stick. Um, the hockey stick pattern is now complete. Um, what's the what's the RSI on Plug? Um, it's an eighty-eight. So it's getting pretty hot. I sold my fuel cell today, right? I kind of, you know, it's funny because. Uh, plug has been getting all the contracts, but fuel cell and what's the other one? BLDP. Uh, but I've been holding the fuel cell. We're up to $19 today. I sold mine at uh, 18 and change down from a cost basis of like, uh, what, seven and seven dollars. Um, where's my channel here? Um, where, where did I sell this thing today? Uh, yeah, eight, sorry, eight fifty-seven was my cost basis in this. So, so I'm out of this, and and of course, it's it's still going and still has momentum. It's tough to let your winners run, right? And and you know, we've talked about this before, but you have to let you have to have some big winners in this game. Um, all right, so that's fuel cell, but um, yeah, very 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 interesting. Um, William Sonoma was the trade that I that was a really good trade for me today. Um, up six percent today. Really nice pattern from yesterday. I was uh, at the end of the day. I, I forgot to look at this. You know, I took some profits and and some shorter term options. And um, I mean, you know, wonderful day for this. Closed on the highs. But that's where today was kind of interesting because um, if you look at retail was very strong today. So you've got value. You know, some value areas. Uh, you got materials in here that were strong today too. And um, you know, we talked about clean energy, so forth. Although I don't see that. Yeah, the banks were up 1.7% for the day, KRE. But then you also had all the online um, <laughs> names go absolutely berserk today. Etsy was up 12%. I didn't even see any news on Etsy today. Uh, JMIA, which is an international name, also up 10% today. Um, Stitch Fix. Uh, I mean, look at Stitch Fix, guys. Uh, up 18.3 percent today so the momentum continues one day I, I, again it, I, I'm missing if there if there was a big note that said to go into online retail today or something but the whole group was very very strong um, I went into this um, I bought some of this far fetch today uh, because it's been consolidating it may need a little bit more time this thing has been went on such a run that you know sometimes these names after they have uh, a run like this, they do spend some time consolidating. So, the, you know, it was fine. Um, what's the ETF for this group? I think it's I, I buy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at this thing. Um, out to new highs. So, yeah, crazy momentum. And then, of course, you know, the Chinese, <laughs> some of the Chinese names. Now, again, my hint, I'll give you, I'll give you one of my hints is that um, you know pay attention to what the local Chinese shares like if, so if you're trading an XPEV or if you're trading that FUTU or some Chinese internet names pay attention to what China does overnight right um, I, I I know um, you know retail traders in the US um, so there's a headline rolling out here but I know, you know, a lot of traders in the U.S. They only focus on the U.S. But it pays. It pays to pay attention to what international markets do. Look at what the Hang Seng did last night. Look at what China local shares did last night, up 2.8 percent. When when it's this strong, more often than not, there's follow through in the Chinese internet, or you know, Chinese name, Chinese uh, ADRs the next day. So I don't think it's any surprise. Um, and we talked about this pre-market. Um, if you look at XPEV, um, if you look at LI, had a big day today. 
Um, FUTU was up another 15% today. I mean, these moves are crazy. Momo saw some call activity, which is a name in a deep downtrend, but you could trade it for a scalp. Look at the val look at the um, the volume on that, right? Next, you know, a couple a couple IPO names, ABNB, right, had a big day today, up 8.5 percent. Uh, we talked a lot about you know in last night's um, member, uh, sorry, last night, last night's Weber uh, uh, member webinar. I can speak. I know I can do it. Uh, we talked about you know how the market webs uh, help us take targets. Um, we called this one earlier. You know, I said, watch this A, B, and B. It's go it's heading towards this one-hour virgin point of control, right? So I put this out on Twitter too, a little bit later than I put it out in the room. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the this was the perfect place to take a target if you're doing some scalping for the day. Um, Fubo was another name, right? And I, I talked about this one th this weekend. Right? I talked about this one Sunday night. I said, um, now notice it has not taken out that VPOC. But, you know, again, the market webs really allow me to be very, um, have less opinions, right? Um, a lot of what I do in my trading is, is I have a lot of ideas. And then I use my system, my technical system, to reinforce when I'm correct, Right, because a lot of times, and, and I know uh, nobody admits this on Twitter, but but people, you know, people are wrong. I'm wrong from time to time. Um, what helps me is to have a system to back me up, right? And the market webs do that for me. So we talked about once we have the breakout of value, um, twenty nine eighty one. And again, you could look at my post. I, I retweeted it out uh, today. But uh, twenty nine eighty one, you know, that was your buy level. And then, you know, I, I mean, you know, this is a nice percentage. You don't have to play this stuff with options. I know everybody is super focused on Twitter these days with options. But, you know, 30 bucks to 34, that, that's a nice percentage gain. And you've got the next, uh, you know, the next rung of the ladder up at 37, version point of control. Um, you know, will it digest there? I, I would think so. I think that's a great place to take a target at this 37, 35, um, and then kind of see what it does. You know, next level would be, next level up would be 40, 78, right? But again, I mean, it's pretty, you know, this has been fun to trade, right? Even though um, you go back to what the S&P did, right? And the Qs, they did nothing today. And I mentioned this in the trading room too. Like I'm okay with these going sideways. Well, you know, the way, you know, the amount of momentum in single names. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with some rotation on the tape today, um, you know, to, to see this, you know, happen. <clears throat> you know, I think the FANG stocks, which I think they came back a little bit at the end of the day, but, you know, if you look, if you look at what's happening with some of these things, you know, they are being rotated out of today, you know, uh, Facebook fell 2.2%. There's a lot of money in these names, right? So the money is trickling out of here and going to other places. And meanwhile, because Facebook, Google, um, which only finished down 1%, um, because there's such a big weight in the indices, when they go down, you know, it's going to distort, you know, the, the overall performance, right? So for example, if you want to look at the, at the Qs, just to see that I'm not making this up, but you could look at the movers in the queues. Um, there's an awful lot of names that went up. Docu was up. Baidu was up another. I didn't cover that one in the Chinese internet names. How could I forget that one? Another uh, another nine percent in that one. Um, Melly out to more highs, right? Uh, Fast, which we played this one in the room today. But yeah, so you start to look at some of these things too, right? So again, like another group, right? So forget about the for now. You know, the Fang stocks are weak. Um, I, I played fast and all today. Um, I also played MP today, which, you know, up 17%. I'll take it. Um, this, again, is all part of doing some homework, right? So we had set the, I had set this one up, set an alert on it. This is also part of our, our weekly weekend, um, sorry, weekend watch list trade. Um, so really, really nice for this one up to 3460. Uh, you know, also in this space, like I like PPG. Um, I talked about Home Depot yesterday. Home Depot triggered, now out of value. Uh, that was our chart of the day, by the way, was Home Depot. Lowe's also got out of value too. So again, lots of things going on here other than, you know, some of those big fang stocks and what the overall performance did. 
Um, I didn't get to my, oh, I did talk a little bit about my trades, but yeah, my entry was 30 bucks on MP. Um, CSIQ, how did this end up for the day? I saw some calls in this one. I dumped them. Um, I just thought that there was better things to play, right? Th that helps me a lot. You know, when I see something not performing, I don't want to keep watching it all day and missing other trades on the tape because, you know, if you get into a trade and it's not working out for you, you're watching it, you're sulking, da 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 da. But meanwhile, you miss five other names are flying by you. So I just get out of it and go on to find, you know, something else. SQM. So, um, also, I didn't really talk, get to talk about this one yet either, and we're 20 minutes in the video, but look at what's going on with agriculture, right? Um, again, this is another area that is pretty exciting to me, right? Agriculture names are really starting to move, are moving, right? We're hearing about food shortages in China. L look at the corn ETF today, right? So it, it's better to look at the commodity, but I, I forget what corn is in here. Is it KI or something like that? No. Nope, um, but I think maybe I can find it here because I have a I had do have a screener here. Oops, that's not it. Yeah, here we go. So corn futures are up five percent. Um, wheat was also up five percent. Um, soybeans up four point four percent. So guys, look at this stuff that's trending, right? Um, and there's things to you know. I didn't. I didn't jump on a mosaic today, but mosaic was up 6%, right? So even like outside of like those growth things I just mentioned, there's other things like CF Industries that's up 6%. I played, you know, I've noticed that there's been some call activity in this um, in this SQM, right? Which is also a little bit of a play on lithium too. So I'm in this one um, up 4.7% and I'm looking for new highs um, in this one. But um yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting. I mean, so there's a lot of things to kind of um, comb over and find where the relative strength is because, man, there's there's momentum in this stuff. So that's what I tried doing um, a little bit, uh, you know, this afternoon, you know, noticing what agriculture stocks were doing. You could also play this ETF. It's called Moo, but um, I mean, it's, it's strong too. It's only up 1% for the day, but look at the chart. Um, matches. So I'll give you a couple setups. Um, you know, unfortunately, this one's a, this is a tough one to play in options, but um, I think that this uh, match.com, you know, could get going here um, in terms of option activity because, you know, it's tough to, <laughs> it's kind of tough to choose. Um, now I took a target in this fast and all like Peloton is one. I mean, there's so many setups that, and you can't trade every one of these, but I like this, um, this little setup in Peloton here. Right, it's consolidating quite nicely. Zoom turned around a little bit today too. Um, there was I saw some people day trading some Zoom today. You know, it did make had a nice bullish engulfing. Um, this also got to the top of value for the day. So you know, if you were doing some scalping, 341 to 345, sorry to 355 was a nice scalp. Um, Fastly saw some calls. This is kind of a tough chart. Uh, but they were going after some calls today. I think January 29th calls. Also, there was a, some way far out of the money snow calls that went up today. Um, what else did we see in our option activity uh, channels? Yeah, these were at the end of the day. RLMD, kind of an interesting name there. Decent sized bet going out to August. That's a pharma name, I believe. Yeah, Zoom calls. By the way, tw like Twilio is another like crazy example. Remember the dip in this thing last week? All the way back, 320 to 375. I played this last week. Unfortunately, I did not hold it. Um, I made some money on it, um, and I did not revisit it, which was shame on me for not doing that. Um, I only caught it up to here, so I, I left <laughs> I left a good amount of money on the table. I didn't know I didn't know if we could get through value and we kind of had a little bit of a step back here which would have been a place for me to re-engage so again it's 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 tough to monitor all these names and trade them um, very well rambus that was a um, a chart that i put out in the trading room um, look at this stock go another big breakout um, again I, I posted this in our chart setups 
um, last night, you know, talking about how this thing had momentum to it. And look at it go. Takes the next leg up higher. Option activity. Um, SPCE. Um, also, you know, if you like Virgin Gal Galactic, they were really going after calls today. Um, this is called Cheddar Flow, right, which is a great way to um, to look for momentum plays and options. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, look at all the short-term call buying in this thing, right? So they were stacking the deck in terms of this one. And, um, yeah, this thing could run up to 29.77 if it wants to. Um, is there a VPOC up here? No, which is good. Nothing until 32. 28 would be a level. A lot of call activity in that one. ENG was a, was a great find by by um, by uh, Team TTG today. Um, iRobot saw a little bit of calls. Pins, you know, finally starting to get going. Right, pins has had some momentum to it. Remember that you know patience sometimes with these things. A little bit. It had a test in here, the 50-day moving average, and since then, um, 65 to 75, pretty strong. Yeah, a lot of XPEV, a lot of LI. So anyway, um, a lot of things, a lot of movers. Um, you know, I w I'll leave it here for the day. Uh, you know, I would be mindful of that level in the S&P that we talked about and, um, you know, control what you can control. We're seeing so much momentum in this call activity. Um, it's been really fun to trade. Um, but at the same time, remember, you know, stay disciplined, um, stay, keep your process and, and stay disciplined. Um, you know, try not get to try not to get caught up in, um, in, in too much of, of the FOMO and so forth. You know, there are so many stocks moving. You can't be in every one of them. Just realize that. And, um, you know, if you can make some money in a couple of them, congratulations to you. And especially when the market's flat like this. If you had a good day today, um, great job trading. All right. Um, have a great night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.